Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Live Let Thrive. <laughs> what is up, Micah man? I'm chilling, Stevie Stacks. How you doing? Oh, kicking it old school, man. You know how it is. <laughs> we are back. This is episode 170, 170. Holy crap. Of your favorite Airbnb, VRBO, home away, Tiro, Lyft, Share Economy, short term rental podcast in the world. And we're coming at you from Arlington and Fort Worth, Texas. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, hi, and uh, what's new with you, man? Anything new going on? I know you got like a ton of things going on. Not much, man. Just getting one more one more house set up. So uh, that's about it. But oh, cool. it's not about me. We got a special guest. Who we got, guess, Steve? Who do we got? We have a certain Andrew Kaiser joining us. Who's Andrew Kaiser? Well, I'll tell you who Andrew Kaiser is. Andrew is head of growth for Mend BNB, which solves the maintenance piece of the puzzle in the short-term rental space. I could really use you. Um, <laughs> Mend BNB clients enjoy 24/7 emergency maintenance, unlimited calls for corrective work orders, and two to four scheduled preventative maintenance visits annually. Mend BNB is based in Nashville, Tennessee, but has recently expanded to new markets such as Palm Springs, California, and Scottsdale, Arizona. When y'all coming to Texas, Andrew? Uh, give it up. For Andrew Kaiser, everybody. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> man, thanks for coming on, man. First off, <laughs> awesome idea. I love the idea that you set that up. That's awesome. And you started in Nashville. How did you come up with the idea? I think I know, but I just want to know how you came up. <laughs> well, I, I can't take all the credit. It it wasn't my idea, but we got a couple guys. Um, I always gotta be honest and point the arrows towards Thomas. He's our COO, and this is kind of his brainchild. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, he kind of comes from a uh, from a manufacturing background in like electrical engineering. So he, the way he views a home is like, if something's not working, then nothing's working right. It's like an assembly line. Mm -hmm. So he was like, well, I'm kind of working, kind of tired of doing the manufacturing thing. What's another market that like could benefit from that way of thinking? And I mean you doesn't take long to look at the short-term rental market to see like, well, there are things that are going right, but definitely some areas that could be made more efficient. So. Okay. Okay. And, and so, you, so you're in Nashville and uh, it's Nashville yeah. where the, where you guys have units or. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got most of our units here. We just got started in California a couple of months ago and then we're, uh, we're starting Scottsdale this month and next month. So. Okay. When are you guys going to Arkansas? Right next door. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know, city number 10 or 15 or 20 down the line. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, let me get to Dallas first. Dallas first, and then, and then. Go yeah. <laughs> I got arbitrary. I love Texas. Dallas. I need, I need some work on my houses. Like, I need to be able to call somebody <laughs> in the middle of the night to go get an AC unit fixed. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from Texas originally, so that I, I might have some sway in that decision making. We'll see. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so that's that is the like a huge issue for a short term um, rental hosts out there to to get someone reliable that can fix things because you will get those calls. Hey, this toilet's leaking, this sink's leaking, this whatever, this um, I don't know, microwave ain't working. I don't know. You get all these calls and and yeah, I mean, and and Micah mentioned something interesting. Yeah, he's got arbitrages here, which is like a lot of them are at apartment complex. They're supposed to fix everything, but sometimes you need something fixed quick. And um, and you can't wait for, uh, uh, you know, put an order in to the apartment complex. We'll be there in two to three to some some worse ones a week or never, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you got to keep your you got to keep your Airbnb going or your short term rental going. And so you need someone to, to get out there and fix it. So so how does how does your um, how does your business work? How, is it like you, you sign up? Are you part of the company or what happens? Yeah, it's a subscription base. OK, so, you know, you you as the homeowner or the property manager just sign up for a subscription with us and then anytime you need us if it's an emergency we'll try and come out immediately um, but if it's not an emergency you just go into the uh the portal that we built out and create a work order schedule us to come out in a time slot that works for you 
Okay. And is this an app or online or just a website? Both. Both. Okay. And, and how much do you pay like a monthly fee for this? How much does it cost? Yeah, right now, well, we have three tiers, um, but I mean, I'm, I do all the sales. Uh, I haven't really seen anybody. Well, there was one person who didn't do the, the best tier, the premium tier, but I just got a text 20 minutes ago that they, they want to upgrade. So <laughs> basically everybody goes for the premium plan, which um, yeah. is, is about a hundred bucks a month. hundred bucks a month. And they come out and fix anything. Is it no charge when they fix it or how does that work? So we, um, all the labor is included for like 90% of things that we fix and come out to do. Right. Cause it's, it's an Airbnb. Most of the time when we come out, it's to like look at a garbage disposal or, mm. you know, diagnose a problem, this or that. Occasionally uh, we will need to use our network um, to bring in somebody that needs to go into drywall for plumbing or electrical or something mm. super complicated with the HVAC. But most of the time, you know, nine times out of 10 is something we can fix in house. And yeah, the labor for that's free. Dang. That's a, that's a game changer right there. So it's, well, it's a hundred bucks a month per unit, correct? Y yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So it, yeah, that would add up. Yeah. 10 units you are paying a thousand a month, but still it might be worth it. You know, um, peace of mind. Um, so, and so like that, that's interesting. You have three different tiers. What are the three different tiers? Um, the one that's a little bit, well, probably double is 200 bucks a month, uh, has a more comprehensive uh, HVAC solution mm -hmm. um, because we all know that that can be five, six, seven grand to fix, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, the one that's our, our basic plan, that's 79 bucks a month. Um, that's basically the same thing as the premium plan, except without the emergency maintenance and without the preventative maintenance. Mm, okay. So, so it's basic and then premium. And then what's the other one? Oh, uh, I think we called it like the super premium or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> super unleaded. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And, and it's always fascinating to me. The thing with pricing, I know you give three options, you know, that's what they say to do in, in a business class. Right. And then, so like, like at the movie theater, you know, the small popcorn is like, I don't, you know, I'm going to age myself by saying a buck something. Now the small one's probably like three something and then, <laughs> then three fifty. Then the medium one is like four fifty. Then the large is like only four seventy five. So everybody gets, they want everybody to grab the large, right? Is that what you're trying to do? But, but people get stuck in the middle. Right. I mean, we just, we just want people using our services. You know, it's when it comes down to our pricing was really kind of tricky because for a while, when we were in the early days of expansion, um, I mean, pe people were getting a steal on what we did. Some people were paying, I couldn't even tell you, like, I don't know if I'm legally allowed to say uh, how much they were getting away with, but it was, we were just giving it away. Mm. And it was actually interesting because we fell in a rut because a lot of people prospects of ours wouldn't sign up with us because they thought well something that cheap is probably not really worth it you know mm -hmm. there, there's a difference between going to you know i don't know old navy versus going to a, a higher end store you know and i i wear old navy all the time i'm not dissing old navy but i'm saying <laughs> five buck t-shirt's gonna wear and tear a little bit than a hundred buck t-shirt so anyways my point is once we raised our prices we actually saw more business come in which was crazy People saw value, thought value. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I know that, that's they, cool how that works. Yeah, people saw that we valued ourselves well enough. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I'm over here making my account. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you don't waste no time. Um, so that's cool. So, so if someone goes on to the, yeah, some, I don't know, yeah, 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 fix like a pipe busts at the place you go over there and, and handle it right away if someone they go online or they give you guys a call directly or how does it work uh either way really so um we actually have we call them table tents or table toppers you know there's a little paper that you fold in half and it sits on the table we have one in every unit with a a pretty attractive model that's our handyman right so mm -hmm. so all the all the people out there are like oh what's that about and so the guests can actually call and, and uh, schedule us to come out, which is cool. Um, alternatively, most of the time, it's the homeowner uh, giving us a call or scheduling the work order via the portal. Mm. Nice. And, tell us, oh, oh, go ahead. Now, tell, uh, tell us one of y'all's, um, a crazy story, a problem that y'all saw for somebody. 
Oh man, I could tell you about the time that we found 30 fish hooks in the bottle of a garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> what the <hell>? Wow. <laughs> yeah, st stuff like that all the time. My, uh, one of our operations guys um, had to crawl in this crawl space and he sent me a picture of the spider that was as big as my face that he had to crawl past to give Tess something. <laughs> <laughs> do it all you know <laughs> so That's okay so how long does it take to get the account because it says i have to pin approval how long is the approval process um so i mean pin approval oh it's probably just talking about the onboarding um where were you down did you download the like the app on your phone yeah 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 so um the way it works is like if you wanted uh, to sign up with us you could just go online min com slash uh Nashville plans, I think, for the Nashville uh, market, or you just go to the main page and scroll down to to sign up. Uh, and then once you do, you'll get a link to our um, it's like our onboarding scheduler, mm -hmm. which is a time for us to come out, onboard your home. We will get serial numbers of all the large appliances and stuff. That way, when it comes time for parts, we already know what to bring. We don't have to come out twice. Um, and we have a whole like 75 point checklist that we do for onboarding. It takes about 90 minutes. Um, and then after that, you'll be able to get into the app, but yeah, otherwise you have people creating work orders and we don't know anything about their home. So, so like does pricing, let me see, for example, so someone that has like a one bedroom condo, one bedroom condo is going to pay the same price as someone that has like a five bedroom house. We do it by square footage. So oh. right now the bracket is 500 to 2,500 square feet for, you know, most of them. And then if you have a bigger home, then that's a separate deal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was now, wondering that. Yeah. Now, do you guys mainly now, have you noticed like your clientele type? Like, have you guys mainly noticed people with homes do it or do you have people with apartments, condos? Who's like been your main clientele? A lot of homes, but we got some condos too. Um, we kind of have a mixed bag as far as um, our clientele demographic too. Uh, we've got a lot of property managers that just dump all 30, 40, 50 properties with us. You know, um, we have individual homeowners, homeowners that just have one or two, you know, we got a lot of different sized eggs in our basket, you know. Hmm. Cause I was thinking like maybe someone could like, you know, the people that arbitrage, like, Hey, we have, 24 by seven on call people coming in, fixing up stuff, you know, that, that I think that'd be a kind of like a good little uh, incentive to get a yes, you know, hey, we got men B and B coming up. So I was wondering, okay, people on the arbitrage route were using it. Yeah. I, I used to do the arbitrage thing for a while. It was a, uh, it's, it's a different game for sure. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever like um, worry about someone calling you all out and thought that they tried to hit up men B and B instead? <laughs> <laughs> you show up in a plumber outfit i don't know i think we get a little crazy you, you were asking how the company started and i can't tell you the real story. no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> they actually wanted you to fix the plumbing you're like oh oh okay right, that's not the guy from the picture all right <laughs> hey 100 bucks is 100 bucks i'm already here <laughs> so, are, are you guys are you guys affiliated with the men home is that you guys as well? We are, yeah. So we have men's home, we have men's B&B, we have men's commercial, and men's lighting. It's all of all us. Okay. So, and they are all, you guys are all in like the construction or, you know, uh, fixing things, you know, around the house or? Yeah, yeah. Mainly the, mainly the maintenance thing. Um, men's home, men's commercial, and men's B&B are kind of generally the same product, just for different markets, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there's slightly different needs. Obviously, if you're around your home that you live in all the time, you're probably going to see more things that can be done versus an Airbnb, you know, um, versus commercial. And then men's lighting is a really cool thing. We have um, a really, really, really good uh, supplier for these um, very cool like LED lights. So we can come in and like dramatically improve the efficiency of your home, drive your bills down. And so that's its own package. Hmm. Yeah, It'll definitely be efficient for an Airbnb or a short term rental for sure. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm thinking, you know, as you're setting up your business and um, 
the only the uh, a big a big company that comes to mind is uh, American Home Shield, and mm-hmm. so so I know I, I would already you know I'll ask you first okay what what differentiates you from American something like American Home Shield that's like you know fifty bucks a month plus they charge you seventy five bucks to come out each time you know what what differentiates you from them? Well, we don't charge you to come out at, at, at all, you know, um, and secondly, we have a really 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 good training program so like. I don't know what they do and I don't know who they send out, but we're not just some middleman that's, you know, on, on Yelp, you know, trying to, trying to be the middleman. We actually train our guys, you know, up and then they work for us. So that's it. I think you get a better quality, you know, I like that. and it kind of, it kind of goes back to that um, viewing the home as an assembly line thing too. Cause those guys, you know, and I don't know too much about them. So if I'm wrong, please let me know. But, They'll probably come out, solve the problem, and be on my way. But the really, really cool thing that we do is we'll come out, we'll solve the problem, and we'll look around for the three or four things that are wrong. We'll mm-hmm. fix it on the spot, too. That way, you don't have to call us out again, and we don't have to come out again. Nice, nice. Now, okay, because now you brought up a good point, because I was going where Steve was going with the American Home Shields, the Home Warranties of America. Have you seen people replacing those people and coming to you guys because or do you guys offer that to people that don't have airbnb so let's say i wanted to just go to men b and b instead of having american home shield because clearly you're cheaper i'm just playing a flat flat rate every month and you come out for free is that an option for people it can be uh there's a couple things that that i just thought of that that might make us better too one is typically with like the insurance thing that just replaces you when you're out as a homeowner you know you got to fix something then you build then you get paid back the guest doesn't interact with that at all all the guest had was a problem and then you know somebody paid for it with us the guest sees hey i have a problem reaches out to you the owner do something about it you call us we come some and do something about it the guest is happier you get a better review and it improves your um SEO, you're placing the algorithms and ultimately your bottom line. Hmm. Now, now this is, this is cause I, we've had so many people, different type of people come on and I think a, a really cool partnership with you guys. Have you guys thought about partnering with some of these short-term rental insurance companies such as like proper or safely. So then proper's already insuring everything. And then if something breaks, they just send you guys out. Is that an option? We, we're having a couple conversations with them. Yeah, I can't say too much. Uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's next level. That's what I want to see. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah. So you go, uh, okay, so someone signs up for you guys. You, you, send, uh, you send someone out and they do like, uh, how many point inspections they do? 75. Okay. And so they can, um, it's, that's, a, that's pretty ingenious because Home Shield don't send shit out. But <laughs> so they go, you all go check everything. And it helps. I mean, it gives the, the homeowner peace of mind, I'm thinking, because they go, oh, wow, they're checking, seeing everything works good. And that's great. And then, but that helps you guys too, saying, oh man, this is, you know, you can knock out a bunch of, you know, some things that won't give you problems in the future at all. That's yep. preventative, preventative maintenance. Exactly. And, you know, it shows to the, to the client that like, we respect ourselves well enough to not take on a home with a thousand problems, you know, mm. but I don't think we've ever encountered one that was in, in total disrepair. In fact, most of our clients um, are not most of them, but a lot of them are just out of staters, you know, that have their homes as a passive income and they just want to, they just want it to work and have it make them money. So that's what we go and do. Now, now do y'all do things like um, uh, swap out like AC filters and refrigerator filters, stuff like that? For is Yeah. That- it's, it's funny you bring that up. I, I spent the uh, most of today working on a spreadsheet that's just that just going through all of our homes looking at all the different filter sizes and uh, we actually have a new feature on our site that's a route planner and we actually we're, we just like we're in the process of hiring somebody who literally just drives around in a van all day with a bunch of air filters and replaces air filters that's just his job the filters guy yeah <laughs> that is that is cool i mean because that's i mean you think about it that's a huge percentage of the problems with, with what happens when an AC freezes up, goes out. It's the mm-hmm. freaking filter that's never mm-hmm. been changed in like a year. Or uh, the refrigerator filter, it starts, the fridge starts leaking up. They haven't changed the filter out in a year. You know, those little things like that. And you do that for free? 
We do that for free. Oh man. Right now. <laughs> As of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the uh, and you said like okay, the it's the third tier, the most uh, the super whatever deluxe yeah. tier is the one that covers like 100% air, air conditioning. Um I'll give you the breakdown of it real real quick. Um most of the time that one when somebody calls, they like know exactly what they want. They're like, all right, I saw this, you know, let's do it. it we call it a premium plus plan. Um, it includes everything in the premium plan. Uh, so that's unlimited corrective maintenance, two annual preventative visits, property cataloging, 24 seven emergency. Um, and it also does two more preventative visits. It includes the energy efficient lighting package I was talking about. So get yourself some really Good lighting in there, save you some money long-term. Uh, we have a smart home package. So, you know, this more, the more, uh, oh, what's the word for that? The, the, the smarter your home is, the more appliances that you have involved. So we can hook all that up together. Um, and then we have a HVAC ultraviolet air purifier, which is a game changer you, you gotta look into that one i don't i don't have the time to, to spit at you too much on that one okay. but we do nice. have a one-year contract with that with that plan oh okay because that's what i was trying to get at because like like here in texas you, you, know, you can't do nothing without an ac so people might jump on that you know cadillac plan just for the summer and then jump back off it <laughs> you know they tell yeah me this, exactly but... yeah you don't need that in december <laughs> yeah okay what happens i know this is this is um I don't know if you'll follow the home shields approach to this because let's say I signed up today and uh, you know I, I know my AC struggling a little and I'll give you all a call tomorrow hey my AC just went out what a coincidence you know how do y'all prevent what do y'all do against that uh well I mean you don't get access to your um ability to create a work order until we've done the onboarding oh that's true yeah you have to go inspect the house first we've we've learned that <laughs> we've we've <laughs> You're not the first, Steve. <laughs> yeah. I guess how Home Shield how the Home Shield does it, they make you wait thirty days until you yeah. can file a claim. So I bet day thirty one they're like, Yeah, this is probably when the claims are gonna start rolling in. <laughs> yeah. I will so we're we're just kind of uh rolling out a new feature that that we're all really excited. It's in beta testing right now, but it's uh when you go to create a work order, you have been having to just call us or go in the portal or create it. It's like four or five clicks. It's not too much, but it's four or five clicks. We're working on a text to create work order now. Just text the number. The fridge is broken. Garbage disposal is clogged. And it'll say, great, we'll, we'll send somebody out. Mm. Yeah. Now, now, what's your response time on something like that? If somebody sends a text, how fast will you guys get there? Uh, I mean, we have to prioritize everything, right? You know, we're, obviously, if if there's a hot water that a hot water heater that exploded and flooded a basement, we got to go on that first. But um, generally, within 24 to 48 hours, we like to be be out there. Um, we're growing so fast that there's always stuff to do. But generally, one to two days. Yeah, that's about faster than home shield yeah you can definitely mm -hmm. replace your home warranty with that <laughs> we're working on it now do y'all handle like uh, swimming pools um we're we're about to figure out that piece of the puzzle in scottsdale because everybody's got a pool. everybody's got a pool there right <laughs> yeah yeah so we're working on it cool man and what else do you um, do it, go ahead oh i was gonna oh, ask uh, you like what kind of maintenance issues are you having with because i know steve has a swimming pool like what kind of issues do people with swimming pools usually have to call men b and b out well, there's a, a lot, a lot. I mean, I have luckily, well, I've had a couple, but, um, you know, the, the pump goes out, the motor goes out, uh, electrical, uh, pipe busts, you know, and they have to, you know, to fix the pipes that go to all the stuff. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few, it's, they, they call this swimming pool, a, a giant hole in the ground that you throw money into. <laughs> water pit, huh? Yeah, the water pit. Money, water yeah. Pit. Money, money, water pit, dude. And and what you know the the big Texas freeze that happened. Remember, so many people's uh, swimming pools got messed up because you know their motor, everything stopped working, so they couldn't keep pumping the water through, and all the pipes busted. And 
So they they were yeah way behind on finding parts. They couldn't even find parts to fix the pools for so for a long time, mm. and so it's a it's a lot of issues and a lot of potential money in, in fixing. See that that goes back to how Min B and B is. They already have your parts because they already did the inspection. That's that's pretty dope, man. I, I need to. I can't wait till you guys come to Texas and Arkansas because I'm waiting. I, I've already signed yeah. up. I'm pending approval. That, <laughs> well, well, Dallas is on the list. If I had my way, we'd go to Texas next. But we'll see. We gotta gotta you know walk before we run so to speak yeah go to dallas first there's no good handyman or uh fixers here oh if <laughs> or they charge a, a boatload to come out man i mean you're talking right. about like right now it's it's crazy because just for someone to come look at something you're going to be charging a hundred dollar fee just to go freaking look at something that's not even doing mm-hmm. anything you know they might go there and say ah you know it's going to cost a thousand bucks to fix it you want to fix it or not uh yeah i'll, I'll go mess with it all right you mm-hmm. still got to pay us a hundred dollars just for come looking at it i'm like mm-hmm. are you freaking serious and so and you- that's not even weekend or night hours you know Right. Yeah. They could, when you get oh, a hold of them, so forget you, about it on a Sunday. You ain't getting nobody to come out on a Sunday. And you guys come yeah. out on weekends. We sure do. 24 sevens, 24 seven. Okay. That's yeah. You guys are definitely, that can be a game changer. You know, <laughs> we think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah that, that's definitely <laughs> game changing stuff right there. I could see a lot of uh, home warranty people getting kind of pissed. Maybe. Yeah. Can I Wait. work for y'all? Can I get a cool t-shirt like that? Yeah, let's go, man. <laughs> we we have a one size fits none program right now. <laughs> hey, live late thriving ain't too hard to beg. So you can send some t shirts our way. War, I'm on the show. What's up? Let, let's do it. <laughs> so go ahead, Micah. Oh no, I'm waiting on you. Okay, I have a very important question. Yeah, Andrew. How come everybody want to keep it like the Kaiser? Keep it like the Kaiser, <laughs> man. I hear, I hear Kaiser puns all the time. What's that one from? <laughs> the <laughs> chili Kaiser so say. Give it away now. Remember that song, Chili Peppers? I go way oh, better. Oh, yeah, that's right. How come everybody <laughs> want to keep it like the Kaiser? Like the Ki- oh, dude. <laughs> that's, yeah. Woo. That's the early I need to 90s. I go back and re listen to that record. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, when you were a kid, you're like, yeah, that's me. You want to keep it hey, like Hey, man. Me? I was I was I was in high school I think when Californication came out. I'm not I'm not that young. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's the no. fuzzy fuzzy beard makes you look younger. I'm behind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so what's next for um for Mend B and B? Mend B and B. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mend. <laughs> That's something else. <laughs> um, well, right now, um, to all the listeners of your podcast, can I can I ask something of them? Sure. All right. So um, have you guys heard of VR tech? What's it called? Repeat that. VR tech. Have you heard of VR tech? Like vacation rental tech? No, no, no. What's that? It's this really cool, um, just like community of people in the vacation rental space, especially innovators that are trying to change the game through tech. It's mainly in Europe. But they hold these, I think, quarterly conferences. Um, And I went to one recently. Well, anyway, we were nominated by VR Tech. Oh, and I should say, um, y'all know Rentals United. Yeah. Okay. Rentals United, um, one of their executives created this VR Tech as a side project. So it's, they kind of have some some friends. Anyway, um, they have this contest every year. It's called the VR Tech Startup Award. And uh, there's been some pretty cool winners in the past, if you, if you want to look at it. Um, but we made the top 20. Um, and so if you just go to Google VR Tech Startup Award, mm-hmm. it'll take you to the page where you can vote for us and go vote for us. Because if we get the top three, then we get to go to France and uh, present our business at the Worldwide Vacation Rental Summit in September. We'll do. Let's do it. <laughs> you get some money to st- to, for your company too from that. Uh, I mean, I think we'll get some some new clients out of it. <laughs> oh, that's good too. That's good too. You get some new clients from this show, I'm sure. Yeah, um, let's go. So, so are you are y'all doing anything like like um, funding, like to get to get growing faster? We are having a couple conversations with people. Yeah. Okay. Right. Like, right now, it's just. Um, we're trying to get our, 
uh, ourselves mm, in a position where we can show like, hey, these are the things that have value attached to them. Here's the spreadsheet, here's the documents, you know, we're at that mm-hmm. stage. Would you do something, keep it all, uh, share economy, would you do something like Fundrise? Um, tell me more about Fundrise. I know there's a stuff, bunch of stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, our last, you know, um, I've heard about it a little bit. It's pretty much, you know, small startup companies go on there and they and they pitch their whatever, whatever their product is. And, and just pe- regular people, like, you know, non-accredited investors like, like us could just go in and start and throw some, throw some money at it, you know, kind of mm-hmm. be an early stage investor, some seed money. And so it's, it's, it's kind of cool. It's using, utilizing the, share, the sharing economy to, to grow people's business. And um, so that's, that's what um, our, last, our last guest was talking about. She's, she's on there doing, um, doing scooter rentals for Airbnb host and she's getting money through Fundrise. And I thought that was a, that's a cool way. You know, it's a, you don't have to go through the old fashioned, you know, um, start seed money through banks, through big banks and all that stuff to get funded. You could, you know, your, your peers in the, in the share economy world could help fund your, your business. Built to help smart investors invest smarter. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> that's why I love doing yeah. stuff like this. You always get a <laughs> bunch of new stuff on, of what's going on. That's great. See, yeah, yeah th- th- see, and this is why I think, uh, like, w- I think we're all, like, we always interview people in the share economy space, and we always interview mm-hmm. people who do Turo, Airbnb, and I think that's why the short-term rental game is so far advanced, like, like the Airbnb space, I'll just say, is so far advanced, because people are always building tech around it, like, there's a whole VR mm-hmm. tech award for it, you know, like, I need, I know Turo needs a bunch of stuff right now, like, they need <laughs> messaging systems, they need, shit, they need, uh, mechanic B&B, whatever you want to call it, to come out there, you know, there's so many things. But I think this is what's pushing it forward. And that's a pretty dope idea y'all got. And I hope y'all go far with it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. We're, we're really excited about it. It's been, it's been a wild ride. I, I joined in February and I think we've tripled our business. It's been crazy. At least nice. doubled. I haven't looked at it. So yeah, it's, it's great. Men's B&B coming to a town near you. Now, one quick question. When were you guys established? December 2019. Okay. Oh, wow. oh, how did now how did how did you guys go through COVID? Was that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, it was actually a good thing because it helped us control our growth. Mm, okay, that's cool. Okay. Because the, the last thing you want to do is grow too big and then you don't have the product to deliver. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I heard that on I heard something like uh, on a on a podcast I like to listen to I listen to the, the Tim Ferriss show and somebody was on there and they're like hey yeah you know I go to this uh, whatever this kind of woo woo retreat you know every year it's just, it's awesome he goes and he goes I could I could tell you which, which one it is he goes no he goes don't he goes we've made that mistake on our on on our show before because he has millions of listeners if we say the name of that company yeah they're gonna get flooded with requests you know and this and that. But then they're going to try to grow too fast and they're going to start dropping the ball in so many arenas. And then they said the company's going to just end from going too big too fast, man. That's what happens yeah, with people it, at. Oh, go ahead. That's what happens with the people at what? Oh, the bigger pocket sponsors. Oh. Yeah, it, <laughs> good point. Good point. What we said, I've, man. <laughs> go ahead. I've been involved with a couple uh, startups now. I, I, I used to work with them. Um, a couple of smaller property management companies that grew and that was our problem. We, we grew too fast. And then, you know, you think you can replicate what you do in your home city where you live in a brand new city. Well, it's not just plug and play. Mm-hmm. When, when we go to Palm Springs, they have a whole different set of permitting regulations and uh, you know, everything's different out there. And then of course, Scottsdale is different. Dallas is different. Every place is different. So you got to take the time um, and until, until at least in the uh, in the Airbnb sort of vacation rental market, everything's standardized and it like has common sense standardization. So so when you go to Airbnb, you know you can expect X Y Z. You know you can expect mint home. You can expect a quality clean. You can expect whatever. But we're not there yet. So um, a- anyways, uh, I'm the head of sales at Mint's BNB. Like I'm I'm the growth guy and. When your growth guy is like, hey, let's make sure that, you know, let's let's do it both at the same time. Equal growth. Let's do it all, you know. Quality over quantity, man. I love it. 
Pump every the day brakes, pump the brakes no every i like day. that man a lot of most because a lot of people you know come on a lot of these shows oh and by the end of the year i want a hundred or i want a thousand you know just like it's all about the number the big number of big growth but there yeah there's not i mean you got to put the, the the right systems into place you know get everything running smooth and then start growing i like that that's true got that it's got to scale yeah i made that mistake <laughs> Going i've done it too man <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, cool, man. Well, thank you for hopping on. This is this is great. Uh, I can't wait till you come to Dallas, but you, you're in Scottsdale. And where at in California? Uh, Palm Springs. Okay, why Palm Springs? That's interesting. Vacation. Uh, yeah. Well, it's the, the money is there, to be honest. Uh, no, we, um, it kind of happened organically. We had a couple clients in Nashville that also had homes out there, and they kept saying, you need to come spring, to Palm Springs. You need to come to Palm Springs over and over, and eventually um, – me and Thomas, the, the COO, went out there, looked around. We were like, yeah, we don't want to leave. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's just stay here in Palm Springs and never go back to Nashville. No, um, <laughs> but um, we kind of used our network there and, and got, I think we have a dozen or 20 or 30 homes out there. So it's, it's going. That's cool, man. I, I, I flew out to Palm Springs a couple of times. I have a buddy that lives out there. And, um, well, his family, you know, is from there. And so I went to his wedding and, and you know, went a couple of times, but I, I just, I've never seen so many golf bags come off of, uh, you know, the, the luggage belt before. <laughs> it's just like man. everybody that goes to Palm Springs. Flying in, you just, there's a golf course. There's another golf course. There's another golf course. They're yeah. everywhere, dude. Everywhere. I, I didn't know it, it gets really hot in the summertime. Really, really hot. hot. The airport is stunning though. It's really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Outdoor, indoor style. Outdoor, indoor style. But, um, it, when it's a little less stunning when it's 120 degrees outside but it's still <laughs> <That's> true <laughs> it's a dry heat man it's a dry heat hey speaking uh, of texas and heat are y'all's uh y'all's thermostats and ac working down there i read some stuff about some things happening we're, we're waiting for heat yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting for the next heat mageddon we had the snow mageddon now we know it's gonna happen everything's gonna just gonna shut out on us mm -hmm. I, I don't know man that, that's this i don't know they're they're pissed off at people that they're pissed off at the government down here with ERCOT. so yeah it's the uh, I think a lot going on. Yeah, Governor yeah. Abbott sneaking a, an extension cord to Mexico, trying to plug in down there on the down low, get some juice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> All but my yeah. families in Texas, man, I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my 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 neighborhood, we didn't lose any uh, electricity or nothing, but we're we're on the same grid as a like a fire department right down the road. So that mm -hmm. saved us during snowmageddon. So hopefully it sna saves us during uh, the heat mageddon that's gonna that's coming. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or else we'll call Mend B and B. Call Mend's B and B. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. Any um, any any thoughts or any further words for our listeners out there? Any inspirational quotes from Andrew the Kaiser? Oh man, just just uh, if you want to grow long term, you got to focus on quality. That's it. It'll grow. Simple. Keep being good. I like that. I like that. Quality over quantity. Nice. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming on, and we wish you the best of luck. We will be signing up, and hopefully you'll come to our cities, you know, soon. And we'll let's be waiting go. for our T-shirts in the mail. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's go. I'll, <laughs> hey, for real, though, we can probably do that. Uh, just send me, a, send me an address, and I'll, we'll think about getting some over. Okay, we'll cool, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, come. I'll go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, I, sorry. I just thought of one more thing. Um, if you go to mensbnb.com slash new city, you can request us in your city. Yeah, Thank you. Doing that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> thanks, guys. Well, cool. Thanks for hopping on. Take yeah, care. Thanks for coming on, man. This has been awesome. Yep. Bye. 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 Man, that was Andrew Kaiser with Men B and B. Man, I. This actually episode actually made me think of like all the stuff you can really base around like Airbnbs. And one of them that we, me and my, my partner, he, he just implemented was he implemented a security system, like a security team. So if they're partying, he hooked them up to the minute and they go out there and break up the party. So it's so many things. I was like, man, you could make something like security B&B &B and that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, men B&B, &B, I like it. That's pretty dope. You know, it's certain things that, like, how do you prevent parties? How do you, you know, get stuff fixed? I think that's a really good idea, man. And I think, remember, Homie was supposed to do it, but it just, eh. Never took off. You tried to use them, didn't you? 
yeah, and it just didn't like, they charge you per hour sitting there. I'm like, yeah, the subscription-based model is better. You know, you just pay somebody. It's like home warranty. That, I literally considered like how you were talking about American Home Shield. I got them and they just came out and fixed the toilet actually like today. And that'd be pretty cool. And they charge you 125 to come out. I'm like, I just pay you guys a hundred bucks a month and you come here. It's a but it, deal. See, Home Shield must have gone up on their prices. It used to be 75 bucks to come out for something. Yeah, it's 125 but um let's say let's say whatever you call them out for breaks it's free for them to come back out so it's 125 until they fix it oh okay that's good that's good that's good but at the same time you're paying them what like you said you're paying them 70 bucks a month 50 70 bucks a month then you charge 125 on top of that them I don't know. You have to really break down the cost. I mean, what, is it cheaper to just pay somebody $100 flat fee? Something breaks, they'll be there, you know? Right, right, right. Also, yeah. though, how do you feel about the 24 to 48 hour thing? Because you have to also look at it. Somebody's in there for a month, man, and uh, freeze, well, a month, refrigerator goes out. Unless, he, But he did say they prioritized it. Maybe that's, maybe that's high priority. If refrigerator goes out, they got to get out there and fix it. So I think it's a good service. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, what Home Shield? No, no, no. Min B and B. Oh, Min Min B and B. Yeah, yeah. If if it you know if it gets here, I'm I'm looking into it seriously. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure we got the new city on lock, man. I'm gonna put us in. See, I, I to me, because that is a big uh, spread from 500 square foot unit to 2,500. That's a that's a huge spread. I thought it would be like oh, a 500 man. square foot will cost you know 50 bucks a month. A thousand square foot will cost you know whatever. Then. But because that's a huge, because I'd, I'd be like, yeah, I'd definitely if I had a, t- you know, with my 2,500 square foot house, I'll get y'all, cause I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get y'all, um, I'm paying the same price as someone with a one bedroom condo at 500 square foot. You know what I'm saying? That's a good so idea. I, yeah, I'm sure they're working on their pricing. But to me, I'm like, yeah, it makes great sense to get it in my personal home, you know, men to B&B right now. as putting it in one of my little 500 square foot condos where I could fix most things and then i just need an emergency every now and then i, I don't know if i want to spend you know but that's just um Hold on, he said 100 per unit right based upon yeah. square footage but that's what he said he said between 500 and 2500 square foot is the yeah, same it is a big ass gap and then after 2500 foot it, it jumps up so maybe if it was you know different you know because one always, bedroom one bath is yeah that's 500 you know got you one toilet to fix yeah Shit, twenty five hundred square foot. That's a damn four bedroom, two and a half <laughs> house. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's big. <laughs> I'll definitely. Get, it makes sense for me on this house, but as, as one of my condos, it might. You know, I just and they're working on their pricing. That's cool. Yeah. Like you said, they're getting everything. You know, uh, quality first. Yeah, um, and even at the quality thing, if it's if it's if the quality's there, you might want to do it. But at the same time, yeah, 500, 2500 That's a big ass gap, dude. That's, well, I uh, yeah yeah I automatically think that I would get it for my my three rental long-term rental homes it makes beautiful sense I never got to go freaking fix a toilet fix a shower I don't gotta fix nothing I just lock it in you know 100 a month for each one and then they fix it right away whatever goes that's that's beautiful for a long-term see and that's why I asked them too I'm like could you guys get out of the short-term rental space I mean cater to it be men b&b but then hop into the regular space as well you know, because yeah. I, w- I would do it too. Like, I would put it on this house and then psh, stop paying American Home Shield every month. Something ain't breaking. And then. But they don't. They wouldn't. Yeah, he he was saying they wouldn't go out and fix a whole AC unit, kind of like Home Shield would. You know what I'm saying? Unless you get the Super mm-hmm. Deluxe Tour, the Super Deluxe one, which is 200 something a month. But. Yeah, we have to. We have to. We have to talk with. We'll, we'll be in touch with Andrew. I'm sure they're working out all their yeah. pricing and stuff like that. Because that would kill them if they had to replace a ten thousand dollar AC unit with someone that's paying a hundred bucks a month and do that a few times. They'd be losing their. You know. See, and ass. I think that's probably why Home Home Shield's like, hey, you pay us a month, right? Let's just say you pay them sixty bucks a month, but then I'll charge you one twenty five to come out. And they probably didn't bank all your money. You know what I mean? And it's just nothing mm-hmm. but profit. So yeah, because like me, I got a new AC unit last. When the pandemic started last year, I got a brand new AC unit. And so I can just call them out to do a tune up on it or whatever, but it'll cost me 125, you know? So yeah, it's, it's ways to think about it. You know, uh, yeah. I'd be very interested in like how you said, put it on some long-term rental properties. That's beautiful. Yeah. You can't lose with that. <laughs> yeah, that that's a, now, now do you use uh, America? Do, do you use home shield on your rental properties? On my other rentals? Not yet. I think I'm gonna put it on there this year. Cause, um, 
because I'm getting a few, yeah, a few things popping up on on some of them. And and Home Shield really, I mean, they saved my ass on this house. My first year I moved in, the first like the bottom AC unit went out. And um and I remembered I had, you know, whenever you buy a house, it, usually the agent, you know, gets you gets you home shield for a year, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't have to pay nothing. But anyways, um, so it was gonna be like a three thousand five hundred dollar fix, right? They had to buy that whatever that part is. And oh, um yeah. and so actually I call first I called my AC guy that I've used before in my other houses and he's he told me in thirty five hundred dollars, I don't know. I'm like, crap, man, this sucks. I was like, oh, wait a minute, I, my house came with home shield. I called them up, they sent a the dude out. Yeah, same thing, you know, 3500 So I knew they weren't lying. He said, I'll fix it out. He swapped it out. And then um, I think it cost me just the 75 bucks for them to come out, right? So it saved me 3500 Then the other AC unit went out. Same shit. They said, you know, they, they had to fix that same part on the other one. And I was like, the first year in, I'm, I'm already like playing with $7,000 of house money. You know what I'm saying? So it saved my ass with the AC units. Right. So um, That's in Texas. That's the biggest thing. If right. AC, if your AC's out in texas you, you better go you find live. somewhere to you live but, but, <laughs> this is real. You, you, you underwater dog you better go find somewhere to live it ain't it ain't gonna work it just so at least at least have a get, get you a window unit for one of the bedrooms stay cool <laughs> stay cool in one of the best yeah and i have bedroom units i have three for my upstairs remember when i was doing the rentals upstairs that's what i put up there because we don't have a second unit for the upstairs it's all one unit so we just put the uh while the air units in, they, and they'll cool off a room and they'll have it free. Oh, they, cold. they work good, man. Like, yeah. You talk about the, even the ones you put in the window or the portable no, ones? Or... The portable ones, the stand up ones that you just and, put the hose in. And then you stick it out the, going out the window, right? Yeah, you stick the little long, no, you don't even stick it out the window. You leave it the little long piece in the window and you close the window on top of it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what, yeah, dude, that yeah. saved my ass at the, um, at yeah. our Airbnb in Dallas. Because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the AC, you, the, I guess the way they do it at these townhomes, it's all like one unit that, that feeds into one section of the complex and each, each one, it, it's, it's weird. But um, so it went out, right? And we have guests there. <laughs> and so mm. I was like, well, wow, we, we're, 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 they're working on it. And it took them a few days to fix it. But in the meantime, like, I can't have, we had guests leaving, you know, and the guests coming in. I said, hi, I got to go. I went to Home Depot and um, got one of those R2-D2 stand-up ones. Yeah, know? there you go, the R2-D2. <laughs> but, but yeah, but it, man, those things blow cold as hell, man. So it, it helped. It helped. And, yeah, uh, that shit will cool off. Of, man, I don't have a room freezing, man. You'll be having yeah. ice, uh, icicles on your palms, man. Bro. Yeah, yeah. And then, then but, yeah, they got the AC fixed and everything, so I could just, you know, some people you could just take it back. Hey, it ain't working out. Yeah, <laughs> you could. I mean, because I ended up, yeah, because I was doing the Airbnb upstairs, I bought three of them for each of the rooms. Man, they like my guests, they would come down and be like, hey, man, can you turn the AC down here off a little bit? Because it'd be so cold in their rooms with the AC <laughs> up there blowing with you, you know, so. Hey, I'm tempted to uh, to get some seed money together, go to all the Home Depots, buy up all the little AC units and stuff, and just wait, just wait for some, for uh, heat mageddon to happen. Heat I'll be, I'll be the right. only one. I'll be sitting on a pile of AC. Come, on, I got you. I got you. It's gonna cost. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Snipe them. You could. No, and and just, it's, I don't know if heat mageddon's gonna come, but they they were talking about it, dude. Like, ain't nobody turning a damn house up to no. What they say, seventy three or something crazy, seventy eight or something. Oh wow. Yeah, and talk about because you know all the people, all these damn people are working at home, man, and they like saying we can't. Get, I'm like, dude, Texas might be, Texas might have to get it together, dude. <laughs> get those uh, windmills uh, churning, man. For real, oh, Lord, yeah, man. So anything crazy happen? We have a couple minutes. Uh, you mentioned uh, some. You had to stop a. Uh, Oh, well, I heard from Mike Brown. He said you had to stop a party, which brings up a good, like you talked about the security thing and he, yeah. he put me onto them. I was like, yeah, so yeah. we're probably going to sign up with that. That's a good, that's a good thing to have. Dope. Dope. So, what, so what happened? <laughs> yeah. He, well, he, he, his party was totally different, but mine, I had to like kick some people out for not following rules, man. They, um, they came in the same night, same day booking. It was for like four nights. Came in. I was like, cool. They came. They, uh, but they put one guest down, right? So mm. I'm like, and we charge anything over the bed count is 50 extra dollars a night per night. So we have, we allow seven, but if you bring anything over four, you get charged because it's not, they're not in the bed. So they're going to have to use other sleeping spaces. Mm. So they put one guest down. Okay, cool. So, and I knew, we knew it was going to be a problem before they booked, they came in kind of like, 
hey, we have all these allergies and we want to make sure this place is extreme. I'm like, shit. And, but ended up, it ended up getting, they ended up instant booking it. I was like, fuck. So as soon as she walks in, she starts saying the place was dirty. Uh, the floors needed work. And it was like, okay, so I know they're, they're, they're these types. So I look at the camera. It's like seven people walking in. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But I look at that reservation. It says one guest. So I said, look, I'm going to send my cleaning crew by in the morning to clean. They're going to come by and clean, um, but I do need you to update the reservation. And I knew it wasn't dirty because I spot checked it that day. The reason I spot checked it was because I had to drop off my park, some parking passes. Mm. So I knew it was clean. She went and pulled up some dust. She pretty much took a paper towel and she scraped dust. I, I'm assuming from like the bottom of somewhere off the floor because she took a picture of it next to the floor. So I'm like, oh, okay, mm. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, right? So you're trying to get a refund. So I said, okay, hey, we're going to send somebody after, send somebody to clean in the morning. And I just need you to update the reservation. She goes, don't send anyone over here to clean until past 12 when we're out. So I'm like, okay. So I said, it, what, what it was was she didn't want my cleaner to see how many people she had in there, right? So I'm like, oh. So uh, I was like, okay. So I said, look, I'm going to give you to 8 o'clock to update the reservation. If after eight o'clock, if the reservation is not updated, updated, you're considered trespassing. She goes, um, well, Airbnb told me to wait and don't touch the reservation. I, I said, I don't care. You have till eight o'clock. She starts arguing. She goes, well, um, what she said? She goes, I'm, Airbnb said to wait and I'm not paying no extra for no extra people. So I knew that's what it was right off the bat. I'm like, okay, that's what it is. So I said, okay, eight o'clock rolls around. I said, uh, eight o'clock. I said, hey. Uh, you're trespassing at this point. Um, our, uh, we're, we'll be dispatching police shortly. And she, then she comes back, but why? I didn't respond. I uh, took a picture of the uh, how many people she had in, and I put it in. I purposely put it in the Airbnb chat because I remember I do everything through Airbnb. I put it mm-hmm. in the Airbnb chat to show she had break, broken the rules. Uh, so they pack up their stuff. They get out of there. <laughs> Nobody even had to come. They pack up. <laughs> they get out. Uh, then Airbnb hits me up. Already knew was coming. He goes, uh, I want to hear your side of the story. I said, here's my side of the story. You can check everything in the messages. And then she took a picture. And then when she walked out, what really messed her up, when she walked out, she flipped off the camera. She Ooh. flipped off the camera. I screenshotted it, sent it to Airbnb, said, this is the type of guest she is. Airbnb was like, okay, we understand both sides. We're going to refund her for the night she didn't stay. I said, that's cool. They refunded her for the night she didn't stay. They charged her for the night she stayed. And then they, the, the Airbnb told me this. They said, hey, if you want to request the money, the extra money for her that she didn't pay for the extra guest, you can go ahead and salt push it to the resolution center. So you got paid? Uh, I got paid. I didn't even want to request it. I was like, oh, I don't even okay. want the people there. But I could have. But I'm like, man, I ain't even. It's like it would have been. Well, it would have been well over a hundred bucks. So you know. But I was like, I ain't even tripping on it as long as they're gone. I don't want the type of guests in there. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, that that that's pretty much what happened, bro. <laughs> See, you out Karen the Karen. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Man, we, I get, hey, you want to get petty? I can get petty. <laughs> hey, what, what did, uh, what did uh, Michelle Obama say? When they go low, when they go low, low, we go high. Shit, when you go low, I take it to the flow. Jitsu on this. Hey, seriously, like people don't know. Like I, I guess people don't think, and I think what happens is a lot of Airbnb guests they think Airbnb controls the property. In order for Airbnb to not control the property, you have to have your rules down to a T. If you have your rules down to a T inside of the Airbnb app, Airbnb cannot control the property. We control the property. Uh, Airbnb told you to wait. Well, Airbnb about to get you kicked out. Mm. And they had no issue with me calling authorities. They had no issue. I put everything in the app. They were like, oh, she broke the rules. <laughs> now, that's where... Um... That's where like having the private security company would come in handy. Yeah. You don't want to be calling the cops all the time. That's not. Hey, I, I was just talking uh, shit. If no, I, was, I, I know, I'm just saying. Yeah, but. yeah. See, and, and that's who I would have sent anyway. It was the private security. But I heard from Mike if the private security comes and they still give pushback, the cops will come with them because most private security they have the police officers and stuff that they can call and they can come out. Right, 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 yeah. right. But I, I looked up that one that he sent me, and he's, and you know, they, if you look at it, if you glance at it, it's like, oh, shit, that's a cop's coming. You know, he has the, the, the thing yeah. here, you know, the top, it has the, the belt with things in it. <laughs> I don't know if there was a gun. It looked like eh, similar to a gun, you know, but he, he looks like a, it looks like a cop. 
I ain't gonna lie. I would want mine strapped up. I would want mine to have a gun. Now they do. They they do offer. I looked at the the one he sent me. Uh, he said they do offer like armed and unarmed. You know. Yeah, I want security. mine armed. You want to? <laughs> no, just, just it's just a simple thing, man. If you armed and you got all that people, you look more legit. Like, look, it's time for you to go. You know. And then did you see that party up in Dallas, in North Dallas? Uh uh-uh, uh. What happened? <sighs> They met somebody's house. Oh, man, I'm talking. It was like 30, 50, 60 people in here. TVs broken, fights breaking out. It was on, the, it was on like all over Facebook, Instagram. And it was in North Dallas. TVs broken off the wall. They kicking down the doors. So they pretty much, they booked this uh, Airbnb. They had a party in it. And when it was time for the party to end, not everybody wanted the party to end. And they was like, hey, it's time to go, man. They weren't with it, dude. Fuck that house up. Uh, Oh, man. <laughs> I was like, terrible. bro. Yeah, if you – I ain't going to lie. That's one thing that kind of concerns me about having, like, a big house up here doing it because I have been looking at a few – just a few birds just here and there. Um, I got some money I got to use. Some, You know, oh, by the way, uh, and this is where I'm kind of going with this. Wells Fargo is closing down all their personal lines of credit. And so if you have one, it's use it or lose it. So I'm about to use mine real quick so I can, you know, uh, get that done. But yeah, bro, it's just, uh, man, it, it's, so I got to use that. So I've been looking at a couple birds. So, and that was one thing that kind of concerned me. A friend of the show, he uh, hit me up because he has a big ass one out in Plano with a swimming pool and people are planning on throwing a party at it. Like, I guess like a two, 300 people party, person party, and he had to find it on Instagram, <laughs> shut oh, it down. Oh my God. Yeah. Especially like if you have a pool, in the summertime in Texas, man, you got to be on high alert, dude. Like, I would suggest the minute system, uh, Vivint, or some type of alarm system where you can see everything, and that security company. Get a security company. And then what you can do with minute, you can actually set up minute to where it alerts your security company if they're the if any, like, noise goes too high for a certain amount of time. Million, million dollar idea on this. You heard it first in the show. Party busters, you know, party busters, B and B, whatever you want to call it, and that's your whole job is say, hey, I'm gonna hire you. I have a big house. I'm gonna hire you guys. To, all you do is scour the freaking web, 24/7, all this whole area, and you make sure there ain't no party gonna happen. And then you know, the part of the party busters thing, they 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 install all the right cameras, all the sound things, everything, and all that they have their own security team. Party busters, B and B. I think I should invent it right now before you. <laughs> Let's pop it off. Party busters, B and B. I mean, all you gotta literally do. Never mind. I'm even gonna tell people on the cast how you do it. It's simple. Like all you do is simply contract a bunch of security companies, charge everybody a flat rate, then pay off the security company every month on a on a retainer. You got a business. That's that's part of it. But the the other part is just just many people from the, wanting to throw a party or ever book with you, you know, or follow, like you said, hitting up to staying on the Instagram, staying on the, wherever they're at, you know, and finding these, these parties before they happen. So you don't have to, you know, call nobody out and then get, you know, banned from Airbnb in your neighborhood. Um, See, yeah, man, one quick thing. Cause I do got to go. I think that's the best part about the security company. You break it. If it, the party does break up, they can break it up. Then you don't have a bunch of cops flashing lights in your neighborhood. Cause that, Man, that's like a thing that right there that will throw it all off. But I'm, I'm happy you brought that point up. Mm, mm, sure. Yeah, start it before it happens. For real. But, yeah, man, uh, been a good episode. Been Great a little episode. minute. But, yeah, we uh, check us out. Email us at liveletthrive at gmail.com. Follow us on IG. Stephen Shea Suarez, Micah, Ar- Mike, Micah Artist. Live, let, thrive. Follow us, send us an email. And, uh, yeah, thank y'all for continuing to listen to us. We've been doing this a little while, man. Thank y'all for continuing to listen. And uh, we are out. Peace. Later. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.